Welcome, Jennifer, to the pre proof Podcast. How are you? I'm great, Adam. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. So we're in a unique position in that we are actually clients of each other. Like we've actually hired each other to do work for each other, which I, th- which I thought was a little bit unique. And so to start with this, I thought one thing that would help the listeners both explain what you do along with help the listeners at the same time is this self-employed mortgage guide that you kind of found, did some keyword research and en- ended up you know, writing for us. Can you explain a little bit like, number one, why you're good at that? Number two, like how you did it and, and kind of how that process came about? Sure. Um, so I've done writing and editing for many, many years, and I am interested in a lot of different subjects. So I got into self-publishing and editing for people um, back in 2003 and went full-time with it in 2009. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to become a homeowner. But what I ran into with lender after lender was this, what seemed like a brick wall. They all wanted 10 years worth of profit and loss statements and some forms that I didn't even know existed. And so I just, I felt like I would never be able to own my own home through a traditional type of path. And then I found you. And when you started talking about how you helped people, that just changed my world, just totally lit me up. And so we ended up working together to get this house that I'm in now which I love and I was so excited about. And I loved that you looked at other factors aside from all of the things that traditional mortgage lenders look at. And you wanted to make sure that I was a good bet. And that was the important thing. So I was really, really happy about it. And I'm eternally grateful to you for that. And in the process of working with you, I learned more about what you do and wanted to help you in some way. So I got to working with a couple of my team members and said, what can we put together for Adam? I know he wants some blog posts and some things that he can give out to his people, um, you know, lead magnets or just value ads. And so we said, well, the big hurdle for most people who are self-employed is this idea that they cannot get a mortgage, that they could never be a homeowner through a traditional path. And the 100% cash down option just isn't really an option for most people. If you are, that's, so, that's nice. But yeah, not, not the case for most people. Right. Just not very feasible for most of us. So um, we looked into that more and more and wanted to put together that guide so that you could get the word out to even more people. And, and that, that blew me away when you guys had put, put it together. So we... We had some, you know, local, I'll call them freelancers or maybe five or different people where they'll kind of like put together maybe like a 250 word, you know, page or something like that. And when Jennifer gets a hold of something like between like the depth, you're going into that. Cause I was like, well, do you need any like, like research or different things? And you guys actually did like different keyword research to figure out, okay, well, lease to own is really heavy. Contract for deed is really heavy, but you know, for people that are searching for self-employment, you know, mortgage, like that's something that if you created some good content around, you figured out like different keywords. And I keep using the word SEO, even though like I'm, I'm a, I'm an amateur at it and, you know, just kind of understanding it, but you were kind of explaining the long-term plan. I was like, all right, well, let's get a, let's get a dose of what this looked like. And so between that and then getting to know you, like this is just one piece of the different things that you've done. What are some of the other things that you've done, Jennifer, in addition to some, some of the, I'll call it um, SEO type blog posts, things that, that specifically we worked on together? Okay. Um, so I definitely have done quite a bit of that, but I've also done freelance editing regarding self-published authors. And I've also worked for some small publishers, traditional publishers, So um, I don't know if you can see the bookshelf behind me. That's um, what I call my trophy shelf. That's part of the books, some of the books that I have done in the past, um, like 48 Days to the Work You Love by Dan Miller, um, Legendary by Tommy Breedlove, You Are the Brand by Mike Kim. Um, Many books that were bestsellers, but then hundreds of others that didn't reach bestseller status, 
but definitely helped to change lives. And that's my whole purpose is to make a difference and to help people who want to make a difference in the world. So most of my clients are coaches or people who are service providers. Fantastic. So when, when other entrepreneurs like yourself are going down this route, and even recently, I think you mentioned you're, you're considering like, Hey, do you, would you want to stay? Are you going to move like looking at different cities or States and like what that might potentially look like? Like what goes through your head as an entrepreneur now, you know, have, having done this even for a while, like different things that go through your brain, just whether they're financing, whether it's city location or different things, maybe just walk us through that. Cause you said there was maybe even some specific state stuff that you were trying to get out of too. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am a big believer in freedom and I, I live a life of freedom, um, and belong to a club that's known as total life freedom. And that's, that's really what it's all about is creating a life that allows people to do what it is that they feel like they were put here to do. And so there are some things going on in my state that are considered pretty fascist, pretty totalitarianism, and um, I don't want to have any part in that. So I'm looking at the feasibility of moving to a state that believes in freedom. And so I look at factors like homeschooling laws, because I've homeschooled my kids since 2010. And I have one to go and we may end up having grandchildren in the future and I will probably be helping with homeschooling them. So I want to be in a state that allows for that with very little restriction. And then um, medical cannabis laws because I suffer from chronic pain and it's very difficult to get a doctor who will actually prescribe a pain medicine that will do anything. So that is something that I need to at least have access to when it gets really bad. And then financial, you know, economic freedom, it would be great to be in a state that does not have a state income tax. So that's one of the factors, but there are so many different things to look at and so many different things to juggle. And right now that's the process that I'm in is prioritizing, you know, what is the most important thing and putting those things in order and I've got a nifty little spreadsheet where I'm grading the states and trying to make a decision. No, wait, my, my wife and I did that too. We weren't moving states. We were moving different cities and we did like a scoring matrix where you had rows of, of like scope items. And then across the board, it was like, oh, here's this city, this city. And it was like, you scored on one to 10 and you were like trying to get all, all math with it. And then sometimes it's like, okay, well, this is like the clear mathematical winner, but how do I really feel? And sometimes it just helps you um, you know, kind of feel out that, feel out that process a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you, you talked a little bit about your journey of like, Hey, the bank's asking for a thousand things. And so, mm -hmm. um, maybe sharing a little bit about, about that in your experience. So kind of what we educate, you know, here on there is like, Hey, yeah, get, get a bunch of different opinions. And then sometimes you do run in that brick wall. You're like, Oh, I just have no options. Or there's different things. Can you explain mm -hmm. what that was like? Like maybe who you talked to from the lender side, on, on what you were trying to go through just as far as acquiring a home? Mm -hmm. So we talked with everyone that we knew in the local area. So all of the banks that we could, you know, drive in, drop in and, and talk to people. I knew a lender through my church, talked to him. And of course he was very traditional, very, uh, no, you must be a W-2 employee <laughs> to get a mortgage and um, I have not been a W-2 employee in a very long time. I, I say I'm certifiably unemployable. So uh, self-employed is the only way for me. So I said, oh, well, that really stinks because I know you and I thought that you'd be able to help me out. Um, and he said, well, maybe look at manual underwriters. And that's something that Dave Ramsey proposes a lot. He says, if you're self-employed, go to a manual underwriter. So I talked to three or four of those and they all were, were ones who wanted 10 years of forms that I didn't know existed. And I had no use for profit and loss statements. Um, I was making my bills. I was paying my taxes. I, you know, doing all of those things that I needed to do. I was keeping the business afloat and it was growing steadily and supporting my family more and more. So in my mind, why would I need to create a PL statement? quarterly or something. I just didn't need that until somebody said I did. And then I thought, oh, do I go back and try to create all of those forms 
for the last, oh, I wasn't even in business for 10 years at that point. So I couldn't even do that if I tried. And it felt very demoralizing. I can't tell you how many times I cried, how many times I got frustrated to the point of tears on the phone with a lender because I didn't have the chess pieces to play their game. And again, I cannot tell you how, like when I heard you start talking about what you were doing, I just, I, I cried again because that time it was relief and joy and hope because I knew finally there's a way for me to own my own house. There's a way for me, um, there's a path. And having those conversations with you, you said, this is what we need. Do you have these things? And I said, yes, I do. I can get these to you right away. This is awesome. It made such a difference. Oh, I'm so happy. And what, what I thought was really cool too, is this suit. I mean, you were, you were Johnny on the spot or whatever metaphor that you want to use, like with getting stuff, being responsive. And I remember you going through like, okay, this is the one that we want. And even talking through like, you're like, we're, you and your family are, are quite handy, you know, from, from that perspective. And so like, I remember one of the first things you did, and I always still talk about it just because I, I, I think it's so cool. Is like, you did like the walking desk, you know, or like the walking treadmill where you're like, you know, mm -hmm. able to like type and move at different things. You kind of had all these like different projects you had going on and you kind of picked a house like, Oh, I could do this or we could do this to the table and all that stuff. And so um, I, I'm kind of curious as you were kind of looking around and, and how you've maybe done that from an improvement standpoint on your house from like, let's say when you first moved in to like now, what, what have you all done to the home? Cause I, I get to see this little camera of, of you and your accomplishments of the 120 books plus, you know, and it seems like you're adding more every single day of the people that you're helping. Um, mm. But just from, from the home aspect, what have, what have you been all up to? Well, one of the first things that we did was we pulled out this really ratty carpet that was in the laundry room, mudroom area. Um, I'm not sure if it was from the 60s or the 70s, but it had all the wonderful color stripes. And um, it was, when we started to pull it up, it was disintegrating. So that that's how old and, and in bad shape that it was. But um, underneath that, the sub flooring was in good shape. So after we got that old, you know, disintegrated padding out and scrubbed it all down, then we, we painted it a solid black. And then my daughter and I did something akin to acrylic pouring, which is an art technique that uses like liquid acrylic paint, um, very thinned out paint, and you can make different designs and swirls and all of these wonderful, magical things. And so she said, I want to paint a galaxy. I want to make the floor look like outer space. Can we do that? And I said, it's our house. Of course we can do that. So that's what we did. So the back room now looks like you're walking through outer space. Oh, I have not heard that story for as much as Jennifer and I have uh, seen each other in person and different things. I'm glad I'm glad you shared that. That's fantastic. What a cool project to get to do. It makes me think of uh, think of projects we'll be doing here with my with my daughter in the near future and just all the creative ways that you can go about kind of making making your your I guess your home a home in in kind of your own special ways. Yeah, we had a built-in, there's a built-in um, like china cabinet, hutch type of a thing, um, you know, glass on the top and then wood cabinet on the bottom. And when I went to put some of our bottles in there, I realized, oh gosh, the shelves are a little too short here. Like, hmm, do I want to change what I was going to do with it and put smaller items into this cabinet? Or do I want to grab a hammer and knock out the shelves and reposition them and make it the way I want to make it? And I deliberated on that about two seconds and I went for the hammer and it was about half an hour or so. And I got it put back together, put everything into it and told my husband about it. And he's like, wait a minute, I didn't think those things would fit in there. And I said, they didn't at first, but Jennifer and a hammer made it work. As I get, I, as my general tendency, I get super excited, you know, hearing you talk about your stories and the different things that you're doing um, in, I'll, I'll, I'll go two ways. Number one, I wanted to ask you a little bit about hindsight. And then number two, some of the things that you're currently working on here and how people can get a hold of you. So okay. 
Um, a lot of times we've been talking about all, you know, maybe good things about people that have done this, but what I try to highlight is different like scams or other things that are going on there. Like, you know, just for people that I've seen locally here, they're like, oh, well, you can get into a home and yeah, you can get a bank loan in like six months, right? And, and everybody's like, oh, sure, you know, I can do that. And then they'll go and like take the house back from them or different things. And so like, we're mm -hmm. trying to educate everyone on, on the right way to do lease to own or contract for deeds. Um, and so there's, there's usually a couple of things where it's like, okay, the paperwork, the person that you're working with, maybe it's even the house or other things. Um, if you had to look back and be like, okay, you know, hindsight, you've been in your home, you know, let's call it several years. It's like, hmm, is there anything that I would have done different? Would have you picked a different home? Would have you wished you had done something different? Or, and I, and this is me trying to pry a little bit. And if there's nothing, I don't want to dig if there's nothing there, but I figured I would, I would ask just so that the listeners can get full transparency that not, not, not every time everything's all sunshine and rainbow. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes everything works, but sometimes there's like, oh, this is what I learned by going through it. Well, the only thing that I would have done differently if I back then had known everything that I know now, I probably would have picked a house in a different town. We moved, we had been driving about an hour, one direction to go to our church. And with chronic illnesses and things like that, a lot of driving can be pretty painful. So we weren't making it to church every week. So maybe two out of four. And I wanted to be closer, thought, hey, it'll be great. We'll be a couple of minutes away. And this house is about a two minute drive from our church building. And I thought this will be perfect. And then everything went crazy in the world and everything was locked down. And our church is still requiring masks, which multiple people in my family cannot do. So we basically lost our church not too long after we moved. So, you know, so, such a distance to be closer to it. So in that way that I might consider staying closer to where we were, or maybe even moving to a different part of the state to be close to friends. But other than that, like this house itself is great. Um, I love being able to do the projects on it. We have two lots and we got a great deal on it. Um, thanks to some of the research that you put in and tips that you gave me and all of that. So I would not really probably change anything. And I definitely would go to you again, if, if we ever decide to move or anything like that, you are absolutely the first person on my calling list. Well, certainly appreciate the kind words, Jennifer. I'm, I'm glad things are working out well. One thing I've noticed too is with entrepreneurs and COVID, as you as you kind of said, the world went nuts. There's like the Great Recession where people are leaving and be like, you know what, this work from home thing and this kind of freedom lifestyle is like super awesome. And what I've noticed in the TLF group or the Total Life Freedom, you know, club that we're in, is a lot of people, you know, maybe there was like mental health stuff or like, you know, I couldn't go out and there was like the social aspect of it. But what I found was that entrepreneurs tend to thrive in chaotic situations. And so, you know, coming from what you've done and then as you continue to, you know, continue to grow, what was that like for you in COVID? And did you see like a blimp? Did it go down? Did it go up? What was it like that for you? The first week, um, people were panicking and like, I tend to book my work out several months ahead of time. I've, I've had as, um, a waiting list as long as a year and every November or so I open up my calendar for the next year to get some people booked. And so I had, you know, around January, February, I already had the year pretty much planned. And then first part of March, everybody panicked and I had $70,000 worth of cancellations in about five days. And I had a momentary heart attack. Um, I, I had a really rough day, <laughs> I had a really rough day, Adam. And I was worried because I thought, oh my gosh, if all of these people for the next few months have canceled, what's going to happen to the rest of the year? How long is this going to go on? And so of course, you know, I tend to be an overthinker and my brain just really got going. So I had a rough night and then I, I went to sleep and I woke up and I said, you know what? It's a new day. I can do things. I can take action. I can be proactive. I can go after the people who are still ready to invest in themselves and their businesses because not everybody is panicking 
and not everybody is in a tight financial situation. All I have to do is find the right people. And so within a couple of weeks, I had all of that money booked again and everything was okay. So yes, a moment, like a good 24 hours, I was freaked because all these people canceled right away. Um, But then I just had to pick up the right attitude and then take the right actions. What a, what a, what a great story. Sorry you had to go through with it, but what a, like, Hey, this is where I was. I mean, just the entrepreneur roller coaster that Darren Hardy talks about that. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a long roller coaster and it can also go steep, you know, left turn, right turn and different things. So now that you've gone through that and you're going through it, there's, there's a couple of unique things that you're specifically targeting on. I know like recently there was some talk about, you know, helping out some agents along with just kind of the overall repertoire that you do. Mm -hmm. And when I was like, Hey, Jennifer, I'm thinking about writing a book next year. Of course, you know, you were like the, you were the first person that I reached out to and was like, Hey, I'm just, you know, thinking about this in the next couple of years, like just want to get it on your radar of like, Hey, let's, let's talk about this. So um, what are some of the cool things that you're going on and what are some of the things that are, that, that you do every single day and how can people get a hold of you if, if they're, you know, kind of listening to this and be like, Ooh, that's, that's what I want. Well, I love helping people to get their message out there, especially if it's something that's going to change other people's lives, you know, make a difference. That's, that's what I'm all about. So it can take the form of website copy, blog posts, books, you know, all sorts of things, even turning podcast episodes into written documents, um, quite a variety there. The, the guiding star is, is this helpful? And I definitely am doing editing books on an ongoing basis, helping people even develop their books from the very beginning. Like when you, when you and I meet, we're going to talk about what you want your book to accomplish, who it's going to serve, all of those types of things and build it completely from the ground up. Other people have already done that part of the work when they meet me and they say, hey, I have a first draft. Can we shape this up? And still other people meet me at the end for the, it's the way I want it, but I'm not so great with grammar or punctuation. I'm not sure where to put the commas. Can you help me with that part? So anywhere along the path that somebody meets me, I can take them by the hand and walk them through the rest of the path. And then their books on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and all those wonderful places. And they're ready to go. That's awesome. When, when people hear um, editing for books, what, what, how would you describe editing for books? Okay. So there are a couple of different types of editing developmental is like being an architect. So that's when you're doing the planning and the big picture items, which chapters need to go in there, which order, how do you take a reader from A to B, all of those you know, big picture things. And then there's line editing, which is where we look at the language that you're using. Is there too much jargon? Is it aimed at the right audience? Is it aimed at the right reading grade level? Or is this too complicated or too simplified? all of those middle types of things. And then copy editing is what most people think of when they think of editing. That's where you look at the spelling and the grammar and the punctuation, and you make sure that the message is clear and easy to understand. So different books are going to need different things. Some books need all of it. Other authors are already great with some aspects and not others. And so we just find out what it is that they need. And the other thing you were talking about, um, you mentioned stuff for agents. Um, I'm doing a content package for real estate agents. A lot of people who are in the real estate industry are extremely busy with the doing aspect, the talking, the conversations, the showings, all of those active types of things. And they don't have the time to do the writing that they should be doing to reach other people. So whether it's lead magnets that they put on their website or blog posts that they're publishing weekly or the emails that they send out to their subscribers list, the writing gets neglected most of the time. They're just too busy. And a lot of people just don't like it. They just don't like to write. They had bad experiences in school or they think it's really tedious um, and they're more a talking kind of person. A lot of real estate agents are talkers and not writers. So they know they need this, but they just don't want to deal with it. And they don't have the time really. So that's a need that I get to fulfill. And I really enjoy doing it. 
For sure. I mean, I can totally see that from my own experience where, yeah, you talk with an agent and they put you on like an MLS trip of like, oh, here's some properties that might come up. It's like, oh, well, I can kind of find those on Zillow myself. But like, and there's maybe there's some firms that have some like generic here, here's, and I guess what I'm calling kind of like an, like an email drip campaign. But I don't know that of anyone that was like, oh, here's just some super helpful of like first time home buyer tips or like, hey, if you're looking in this area or this neighborhood, like here's a breakdown of it. And if someone had brought that to me at that point, like how, how much would have that set them apart from someone else? I'm like, oh, I didn't know that this school district is a, you know, 4.8 out of five. Whereas if I go, you know, half a mile North and I'm in this, you know, this school district, and that could make a, that could make a world of difference. And that's what an agent is supposed to be good at. And so helping them articulate that, yeah, they might be able to explain that on a phone, but for the people that are coming to them that are, you know, not maybe ready to buy or do different things, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yeah. Jennifer, so, thank you very much. As we, as we wind down here towards the end of the podcast, if people wanted to get a hold of you, which we're going to, you know, put here in the podcast notes too, but what is the easiest way and preferred way of getting a hold of you? Well, I have two ways. One, I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm rapidly aff- approaching the Facebook friend limits, but I'm always interested in connecting with people. So that's one place um, people can message me or friend me there. And then my website is harshmanservices.com. And my email is jennifer at harshmanservices.com. Fantastic. Uh, sometimes Jennifer, there's, there's the things that you maybe wish you had talked about that I didn't ask anything on there, particularly on your mind that you felt like we didn't cover or that you wanted to share? Well, I always want to let people know that if they choose the right, if they have the right attitude and the right resources, they can do amazing things. And if they choose the first, they will find the second. Ooh, I really like that model. That one's going to, that one's going to go in there for sure. And you're, you're one that, that amplifies that or exemplifies that. I remember the first time that we met in person in Phoenix, it was, uh, you, you were living true to what you had just spoken because there, there was a lot of that coming forth and it was just, it was great to see you in the flesh exhibiting that. And since the times that we've, that we followed. So what an inspiration, Jennifer, what a wonderful person. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. Have a good one. You too.